Everything that we've looked at so far over the course of this module has been on a really big scale. We've been looking at weather fronts and pressure systems that literally cover hundreds and thousands of miles. What we're going to cover in this lesson is on a much smaller scale. We're going to be looking at uh, local and coastal weather systems that are caused by the nature of the land. Being able to look at the sky and looking at a chart and then realising how uh, the local features in your landscape might make the weather that you experience different to what was forecast is what really sets apart a yacht master from a casual sailor. The most obvious effect that land will have on how we experience the weather is shelter. Land is great at creating a physical barrier for the wind. And even if it um, doesn't block it completely, it can slow it down with friction. Meaning that if we're in the lee of the land, we're going to experience the benefits of the shelter. We would call this, what we're experiencing here, an offshore wind. If it was an onshore wind, this obviously wouldn't give us any benefit whatsoever. Not all land is going to create equal shelter. If you've got very flat and featureless land, then it's not going to do much apart from create maybe a little bit of friction and slow the wind just a little bit. Put some trees in there on the other hand, and trees are really good at absorbing a lot of the energy out of the wind. And so if, if you've got a forested or wooded area nearby, then it's going to be um, much more sheltered. Then we've got cliffs. If you can get close in to some big cliffs, then what you'll find is the, um, the wind will get directed over the top of the cliffs and there could be some good sheltered water close in underneath. And then we've got valleys. Wind can get uh, funneled by valleys and can actually be stronger where it gets drawn through, through a valley. So um, rather than shelter, you might actually find increased wind because of a valley. So these are some other land effects to do with shelter, all quite easy stuff. And as soon as you get any distance away from the coast, these effects will all return back to normal. Headlands that protrude out into the ocean are going to have an effect on the direction and the speed of the wind. If you take a look here and imagine that we have a northeasterly wind, rather than going directly over the top of the headland, which is going to create a lot of friction, the wind always likes to follow the path with the least resistance. And so what it's actually more likely to do is to bend around the shape of the headland. And what you may also find here is that at this point, it may even speed up. The shore doesn't only affect the wind when it comes to an offshore breeze, but when you've got the wind running in parallel to the coastline, you can get what's called a converging or diverging wind. And that is where, within the space of a few miles from the coastline, the wind can either speed up or slow down and even change direction due to the extra friction that you get between the land and the wind versus the wind and the sea. The difference in the wind angle between the land and the sea can either cause the winds to blow together and combine and increase, i.e. converge, or to separate apart and reduce in speed, which is called diverging. The way to remember which of those to expect is that if we've got the wind to our back and the land on our left, then we can expect the wind to be reduced. Okay, Charlie, when the house bears about 270 degrees. ...to work out our distance from the lighthouse and use that. We might be perfectly on track, but if we're not on time... Let's have a look, I've got my phone here. 
and the effect it has on our steering compass. So echo sound is working, we can find a contour and follow it nicely into port. Our left hand is pointing towards the centre of the lobe. 